welcome to the Muskegon Heritage Museum. I am Ann Dake, a volunteer docent at the museum. Today, we are in the lumber and logging industry exhibit at the museum. The, that industry was the first major industry in Muskegon, and it began in the late 1830s. Today, Linda O'Connell and Tricia Lammerman are here. They are docents as well, who are going to share lots more with you about lumberjacks and the entire industry. Muskegon was a great place to have the lumber industry. It peaked in about the 1880s and 1890s. We had the forests of huge pines and hardwoods that were great in using to create the boards that were used for the prairie towns, and we also were instrumental in helping rebuild Chicago after the Great Fire of 1871. We had the rivers that came into Muskegon Lake that could be used to then ship out to other places. We also created the rich and famous that today, like Charles Hackley and Thomas Hume, whose, whose homes can still be toured. We had 47 sawmills on Muskegon Lake and 16 in White Lake, which is just north of here. The lumberjacks would go out into the, the woods in the winter time for a couple of reasons. They would go because the trees didn't have any leaves on them, so it was easier clean up. Also, they used the, the frozen ground and the snow and the ice to move the logs more efficiently. So the lumberjacks would go out into their lumber camps in the woods with the, the lumberjacks, the cooks, the people who took care of their equipment. Um, they had... Uh, a man who would sharpen the teeth on the saws, who they called the dentist. And, and they had to use these saws because there was no a power. They didn't have uh, chainsaws or anything like that in the 1800s. And so they used hand saws, as you can see in some of the pictures. Uh, we're going to show you how a two-man saw would have worked. They would be by the tree, and then they would work together to cut the tree down. They had to mark the logs after they cut them down because they, lumberjacks were working for lots of different companies in the woods and so they would design, the lumber barons, the owners of the company, would design a log mark, something that represented their company and then they would make a, a, an implement th that had it on there and they would use it like a, like a hammer they would put on their boots with the, uh, all the spikes on them and they'd stand on the log and then they would hit the end of the log with the log mark tool. Now they would do it more than once because these logs would be floating in the, in the river and you know when you're floating, you don't always stay up on top, you're partly under the water. So wherever the, the log rolled, you'd have to be able to see the log mark. Now I have a piece of a, of a tree because there were some people who weren't quite following all the rules. They would uh, cut off the end of the log and then put their own log mark on it. So we have found these in the river, uh, we found them in the lake, we found them by the sawmill, so they're, they're still actually being found. In the spring, the logs which had been piled uh, on the river banks were pushed out onto the river and because it was spring and the water was high and fast flowing, they could push the logs down towards Muskegon Lake. There was a section at the of logs that they used poles like this to keep the logs going in the correct direction. If the logs jammed up, sometimes it was so bad that they had to use dynamite to break them up. And at the end of the river, there was a section called a boom. And in that section, the logs were moved to sorting areas where then this is where the log mark was so important because they were sorted by log marks, chained together, and then floated to the specific law sawmills where those logs belonged. Now that we are all knowledgeable about the logging area and industry here, I'd like you to be a lumber baron, and all you will need is a paper plate, perhaps a magic marker or a pen or pencil will do, 
And what you need to do is you need to create your own log mark. What I did, one of the easier things, is I used my first initial and my last name to create a log mark. Or you can create symbols that you could use to identify your sawmill. But you need to remember that they need to be at least four different places on your log because when they roll, the lumberjacks have to be able to see all the different log marks. So it's recommended that you put at least four to six different symbols on the end of your log so that it can be identified. Thank you for visiting us today and learning more about the lumber industry in Muskegon. We encourage you to visit the museum. You can check the website for hours and times that the museum is open. The website is muskegonheritage.org. Thanks again for visiting. We'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.